we have um, a special presentation by um, our elder, Mike Huntley, today um, in a prayer. And uh, our elders are going to be opening our services with prayer over the next, the, the rest of this month. So thanks, thank you, Michael, for being here. Thank you, Pastor Chris. Um, we, we had a meeting this Tuesday, and we want to talk about uh, how we can support our staff. So I want to have a couple of thoughts here just to share. I've been kind of praying about this, and I hope you'll indulge me just a little bit to share what I believe God is saying, at least to me, and maybe to us. Um, but I'm reminded of, I was reminded this week of a quote um, from President John F. Kennedy when he was addressing the 1961 graduating class at, the, at West Point. He said, when there is a visible enemy to fight in open combat, many serve, all applaud, and the tide of patriotism runs high. But when there is a long, slow struggle with no immediate visible foe, your choice will seem hard indeed. And I think that kind of describes what we're going through today. We are fighting against an invisible enemy. And we've got this virus going on, and there's riots and attacks on our national institutions that have been going on since this summer, lies poisoning our discourse. But our struggle is not against one another. Our struggle is against the devil and his forces of darkness and destruction. But yet we do kind of need to resolve or we learn to work together through these things. So specifically, I want to talk about the maskers versus the anti-maskers. The maskers have a genuine concern about safety. People indeed are dying from this disease. So my advice to those folks is to take precautions, but ultimately we place our trust in God and not in one of those. And the anti-maskers also have a genuine concern about civil rights. But perhaps we can exercise those civil rights to help protect one another and show concern for our brothers and sisters who are scared and vulnerable. The thing is, we can work together. So wear a mask, and if you're concerned, pray for God to protect you. He will. He can. And he will. And if, if you're not wanting to wear a mask, just do it out of love and concern and, and, and caring for your neighbor. If you have any questions about what Scripture might have to say about this, I would suggest Romans 14. You can read that when you get home. But let's just do this as we work together to prayerfully wait for God to overcome this immediate and invisible foe. My second and last point is we need to support Pastor as he ministers to us through this pandemic. I spoke with a friend of mine who's a pastor in New Mexico this week, and he shared that every single aspect of what he does now has an added layer of work that is required to accomplish it. And think about what Pastor Chris and the staff here, Kristen and Donata and others, have helped as we've done over the past year. First of all, creating a new way to worship online at the beginning of all of this a year ago. We had never done this before. That took a lot of work. And it went, it was amazing. It went great, right? And then after we were able to come back to church, we then had to create a new way to worship here in this place with the concern, taking seriously the concerns of the virus. But here we are still today, worshiping together every week. There was Easter last year and Christmas and all of the worship services to try and accommodate all the people and yet concerns for the virus. That took hours and hours and meetings and meetings and everything has gone fine. We're still here today doing it. And not only that, but we're doing it in accordance with the laws of the land, as we are called to do. And this month, now we begin Lent. So there's another extra layer on an already stressful season for Pastor and Kristen and the staff to have to work through. And, and another thing that my friend shared with me is that there's this constant fear that you, ha you need to be able to minister to your people, but yet there's this fear that what if I carry the virus to somebody and they get sick? Or worse, what if it kills them? Can you imagine having to bear that responsibility? And you have to carry that burden every single 
day. Pastor ministers to us, but we need to do the same thing as well. It will never work if ministry is a one-way street. It's not just about pastor and Christian and the staff ministering to us, but we also have to minister to them, or this job is impossible. So what I would say is, what we as the elders, we talked about this, what we're asking is for everyone in the congregation to pray for our pastor, Kristen, for pay for, pray for our staff, that we can support them like Aaron held up the, helped Moses hold up the rod at the Red Sea, that mutually together we can come through this prayerfully, faithfully, with God doing the work among us and answering that prayers. And I can tell you when, when I've had difficult times in my life, and especially in ministry, when things were so hard and the weight was heavy, and you have sleepless nights like you have no idea. I'm sure pastor could tell you that. It's true. But you can tell when people are praying for you. I had one time when I was going through a difficult time, and, and God said to me one day, it's, I was like, why, is, why am I not having such a hard time? It's all of a sudden easier. And it was like God said, because people are praying for you. And I, I said, really? And I, as I was talking to people, I would, kind of, I would ask them, are you praying for me? And people all over the place were saying, yes, it makes a difference. Five minutes a day. Pray for Pastor, pray for Kristen, Donata, the staff, their families, because they're having to also see the difficulties and help struggle with these folks as they minister to us. We have got to minister to them or this is going to be impossible. So this month, the elders, as we head in towards the season of Lent, the elders will lead us in doing just that. At the beginning of every worship service, we're gonna come up here and we're gonna pray for our pastor. So let's do that, please stand. Gracious God, we come before you this morning, and we see darkness, we see sickness, we see strife in the world around us. But then we look to the cross, and we see our sin nailed there, but we also remember and see the empty tomb. We trust that you can take from whatever difficulties, whatever pain, whatever struggles we have, whatever sickness, you can use those things to bring healing, to bring strength, to bring life, to bring peace. We pray for Pastor Chris, Lisa, Benjamin, Michael, Rachel. We pray for, pray for Kristen and Donata and their families. We pray for all of us here at Epiphany as we struggle in our own way through what is going on today. We pray for our nation that you would bring healing and for our world. Put an end to this pandemic, but use this as only you can to bring healing, restoration, and peace. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you. Michael, thank you.